Hi everyone, welcome back to Adrian's Digital Basement. On today's video, I'm trying something new. I'm gonna be calling this the 4-bit video series. Kind of like half of 8-bit is 4-bit. It's silly anyways, but what it is is my attempt to make quicker, shorter videos, something I can make more quickly and get out more frequently as well. One problem I find I'm having with my channel, and it's really a good problem to have, so it's not really a problem, is that due to the extreme generosity of my viewers, I'm getting a lot of donations for mail call. And as you know, I like to go through all the things I get and show them off on the channel, but I'm running into a problem where I'm not really able to keep up with the incoming packages I'm getting and produce the videos and put them out on a normal schedule. So I've decided to try this four bit video idea to try to streamline the process and just get stuff out more quickly. So let me know in the comment section if you like this idea or you think this is silly and I should go back to another format or do something else. Let me know in the comment section. Anyhow, for today's video, we're gonna be looking at some Macintosh stuff. We're gonna be looking at a Mac SE30 motherboard, which is in desperate need of a recap. Let's get right to it. Priority mail package here from S. Molnar, Alameda, California. This package arrived on June 24th, but I'm actually opening this on the 21st of July, so it's a little bit under a month, at least, to opening this. Although, when you see this video, it may be quite a ways in the future because I edit these together to make episodes, right? So, anyways, let's open this up. All right, what goodies lay within? Packing cushions, something here. <laughs> There's a Bentley bag. We have a letter, and that's it. Uh, let's start with uh, the Bentley bag. <laughs> okay, and a really nice Christmas Ziploc bag are a bunch of phone net adapters. So you may have seen my mail call video where I show off phone net, and I use that in combination with a ModuNet 2 adapter that another viewer sent me, and I was able to make a little network. Well, this is five more phone net adapters, so with this, I should be able to network all of my stuff together. A cornucopia of phone net adapters. Let's see what's wrapped in here. X marks the spot. Got a motherboard. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So here is a Macintosh SE30 motherboard. So I have a Mac SE30 now, and it does work. I've recapped it twice. But it's nice to have an extra motherboard not to mention because I have a Mac SE that I could create a stealth SE30 upgrade. I am, in my opinion, the SE30 really is the best classic Macintosh motherboard ever made. We have a full 32-bit data path to everything, so it's fast. We have a lot of RAM capability here. I think it can go up to 128 megabytes of RAM, so you're not limited like on the classic two. And this thing just screams. Not to mention, you can plug accelerators into this slot here, and I think they made like 68040 accelerators and all sorts of interesting stuff for the SE30. Anyhow, this motherboard is in really nice shape. Uh, looks like the caps haven't been changed, so there's a little bit of leakage, but the corrosion doesn't appear too bad, at least at first blush, and the battery has been removed, so we don't have to worry about leakage there. Let's check out the note. Uh, this comes from Stefan. Here is the SE30 system board I've been holding for some time, but never got an SE case for. So here you go. Also included are a few phone net adapters to get all your classic Macs <laughs> networked together. The PDS ethernet card I thought I had has been lost to time and I cannot find it anywhere. That's right, Stefan emailed me and said that he thought he had an ethernet card that would go into this slot to give the SE30 ethernet. And anyways, there we go, no ethernet yet but Apple Talk and an SE30. Let's take a look at this on the bench. So this SE30 motherboard is in great shape, but the electrolyte has leaked out of these uh, surface mount capacitors, but it's not terrible when it comes to the corrosion. I mean, it's definitely corroded, but I wanted to actually test it out before I do any of that, just to see if it's working. What I'm very curious about is this is the spare Mac Classic monitor and CRT. This is the CRT I rejuvenated. And I'm really curious, can I power this SE30 motherboard from this classic power supply? Now taking a quick look, the power supply connector is the same number of pins. Let's see if it's even compatible. Oh, absolutely, it just plugs right in without any issue. 
Now these types of connectors are keyed in that some of these pins are round and some of them are square, the plastic part at least. So if Apple had changed it, you would think they would have moved around the round and the square holes so that it wouldn't just uh, plug in without any issue. Here is a classic motherboard. And interesting is when you put these over each other, the port layout and the spacing is identical between the two, except for the fact there's only one ADB port and the SE30 has two. But this actually leads me to believe that it might be possible to put a full-size SE30 motherboard like this into one of the Mac Classic cases, and all you'd have to do is remove probably these uh, metal tabs here and also this extra ADB port. Although now I think about it, it's possible that inside the plastic case on the Classic, there's space and this stuff would actually just stay behind the case without any issue, like there's just no cutout. But there might be room and it would actually fit without even modifying this at all. Of course, there's the question about the length, but I think that should work as well. The only thing that's probably an issue is the fan assembly, I think sits around right here where the motherboard would be. So it'd have to be modified or removed or, or something like that to, to deal with that problem. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up one of my Mac SEs and I'm gonna just check that the cable coloring looks the same so that I don't accidentally blow this motherboard out by connecting it up to this power supply. Checking the color of all the cables on this versus the SE, everything actually looks exactly the same, except for one wire, this red wire right here. It's black on the SE. But I looked at the schematics for the classic power supply board and, and the red wire, which is labeled HS7 on the actual PCB, is just one of the two speaker wires. So clearly that's probably just ground on the other one. And the other wire is green slash yellow, which if we look here is that wire right there. Oh, and whoops, I just realized that the speaker on the SE is connected right here to the motherboard directly. This has the audio amp on it. And on the Classic, it actually uses an audio amp on that board. So the audio signal comes through this. So when I hook this up, the speaker on this board is simply gonna get just grounded, which doesn't do anything at all. The green yellow wire, which is the other side of the speaker right there, is also black on the SE30 and the SE. So it will be just grounded on both sides and sending ground into an audio amplifier doesn't do anything. So I am gonna go out on a limb and say that it's safe to plug this power supply into this board, and I'm gonna try it right now. Okay, let's plug this in. Now, this motherboard may not work, A, and B, the fact that the capacitors are bad could well mean that it's not gonna boot. You know, we might get a, a screen with some lines on it or something like that, and that's fully expected until I recap it but I just wanna see if this does anything. We should get synchronization on this. If you remember from the classic power supply, it will not even start high voltage or do any syncing if the motherboard is not sending a sync signal. Also, a word of caution, don't ever run a monitor and power supply outside of the case like this. It's very dangerous, mains voltages up here could potentially kill you, not to mention the high voltage for the monitor could give you a nasty shock. Here we go. That was not happy. The power supply was making a chirping sound that would indicate that it was not happy being plugged in like that. Let's just plug it into an actual classic board, make sure that everything is working here. There we go, it started right up. So, okay, not compatible, even though it's the same pinout. I wonder why exactly. Before I rule definitively that this is not possible, I am going to take the actual Mac SE here. This Macintosh SE, which still totally works, it's been in my family since it was bought new. I used this computer a ton when I was a kid. There are pictures of me with this machine. Definitely on the SE, the SE30 and the regular SE motherboard are fully interchangeable within the same case. You have no issues running them. You could like swap out the regular SE with an SE30 motherboard or vice versa. And that totally does work. Okay, I'm ready for testing. The motherboard is connected. The power is connected. Let's turn this on. Well, the hard drive's not spinning. Oh, the hard drive spun up there. It was not so happy, super happy, but there is a picture and I do see the gray screen. You have to take my word for it, but it's working. The gray screen is there. I see the mouse pointer. So this motherboard is working. And that definitively says you can't plug a classic power supply into an SE or SE30, at least not with rewiring some of the pins. I'm gonna have to investigate a little further on that. But for now, I'm just gonna focus on fixing this motherboard. I think everyone knows the drill by now on repairing these old Macs. I'm gonna remove these memory modules, the ROM module, remove the capacitors, install new capacitors, and then give the board a full thorough washing and dry, and then pre-install these memory modules and we should be good to go. One thing to note is these memory slots are plastic and they're fragile and they break very easily. So you have to be super careful taking this stuff off.
Okay, I've removed all the caps and cleaned up the pads and everything is okay actually. Some of them are pretty crusty, but I use my tweezers and I scrape off all the crustiness. And then I check the continuity to the nearby vias for all of these pads and everything looked good. There's definitely a good amount of corrosion here and there now that I was looking closer at the board, like uh, these little diodes here for the clock were pretty corroded, but I scraped away at the pads and the little legs and I was able to tone them out. So they seem to be still connected. Over here, nothing is too bad. There's definitely some goop and corrosion around here. As usual, the sound section of the board took a lot of uh, abuse. There's a good amount of corrosion on these chips here, but everything should be okay. I scraped away the pads as much as possible. Yeah, you can notice all the pins here are very corroded. Everything up here is also very corroded. Electrolyte just does a number on things. And this cap over here cleaned up really nicely. Actually, it's very minimal corrosion in this area. I did get all the memory out and the ROM without breaking any tabs. It's very difficult. You gotta push these over a lot. It hurts your thumbs quite a bit. Just Apple used really junky SIM sockets on this. Why didn't they use ones with metal sockets? Why? All right, and let's recap. And we're done. The board's recapped. It's all cleaned up and it looks good. I noticed one thing. There's a bent pin on the SCSI connector here. One of the pins right there that is in the row facing the back of the computer. I sort of bent over and flattened. I'm just gonna cut it off. All of the row on the back side here is ground, so one less ground pin is really gonna matter. So I'll just snip that. Okay, everything else on this board looks great. I soaked this in soapy water. I toothbrush scrubbed it, especially around these chips here, which had a little bit of blue corrosion in these. The pins are dull now, but it certainly looks a lot better than it did. And otherwise this machine, I think, is ready for testing. I think the last thing I need to do is just remove this battery holder. I should have done that already and put a CR2032 there. Well, there we go. I did it without a bodge wire as well. I just used a little piece of um, off-cut resistor to extend the positive leg to the original positive location right there, which runs over to this diode. I put a little heat drink on there and uh, I put a little hot glue under there so it's um, held down. And there's more space on this motherboard so it doesn't even have to be a little crooked like it does on the Classic. Well, I can't believe it, but I actually am out of CR2032 batteries, so I'm just gonna have to steal the one off um, this Classic here and install this here in um, the Mac uh, SE30. And I'll just do a quick test to see if we're getting uh, voltage. We're getting three volts. And here on the diode, we should be getting three volts. We are, and on the output of the diode, which is this via here, uh, we're getting 2.7. So yeah, we're getting voltage drop, but that is uh, expected. All right, now it's time to reinstall some memory in this. So let's sort out what kind of RAM uh, this machine had. Seemed to have a bunch of uh, kind of hodgepodge of stuff. Okay, so these three memory modules, well, while they look similar because they have white stickers, they're not really similar. Um, these three here are the same. These, t th these two modules are the same. And um, uh, these three modules here are the same. And then these two are slightly different. So this machine has eight memory slots, but each one is only eight bits wide. And this is a 32-bit processor and it has 32-bit data paths. So you need to install memory in pairs of four. This does support up to, I think, 128 megabytes of RAM, so that's pretty significant for these classic Macs. It's definitely the, the most that can fit in the monochrome Macs. And this memory module right here has Hyundai chips 514-100A, and when I look that up, it shows that this is a four meg by one bit uh, DRAM chip. So that means this is a four megabyte SIM, and of course it's by one bit, there are nine chips on here, so eight of them are used for the memory itself for four megabytes, and then one is for parity. So these three modules here are all four megs, as is this one right here. And let's see what these are. Oh, these are all four megabytes as well. And then we have this one here, which also is a parity memory module, and this is a four meg module. So this thing has all four meg modules meaning that fully populated, this thing will have 32 megs of RAM. That's pretty kick-ass. So these memory modules are labeled SIM 1, SIM 2 for these pairs, 3 and 4, which means you have to, uh, I, I assume you have to install these four first, then these four. In case I have to take this RAM out again, I'm only going to install four at a time. I just do not feel like going through the exercise of trying to pull the RAM out. Now, putting it in should be a lot easier. 
Okay, with the Mac SE, I think I'm just gonna take the motherboard out of here, the original one, and we'll put the SE31 in here. That way we can hook up this speaker to make sure the audio is working because that's, of course, always a problem with the leaking caps as it kills the sound on these. I always like to disconnect the neck board off the CRT first <laughs> because it was in this very machine that one day I was pulling off like the SCSI cable or something like that, and I actually broke the neck of the CRT because this was connected, and my hand slipped and bumped this and psh, let the air in. And so this CRT on this machine is actually not the original from this computer, it is a replacement. And this happened when I was a young, young man. This is the original motherboard from this machine. I have since cleaned it because it was so dirty, but it luckily has no surface mount caps, so we don't have any leaking caps on here. And I did replace the battery a long time ago with a CR2032, although it's a pretty junky install. It's kind of sitting up off the motherboard uh, with some hot glue, but there's just not space to put it flush like it is there. This motherboard is from 1988, and it's great that this still works, and this whole computer still works, to be honest. And I think I will not be putting this motherboard in here permanently because I like to keep this computer pure, so to speak. All right, let's plug this into power. I am not going to connect the internal hard drive because it's got system six on here. I don't think this will work on the Mac SE 30. So I'll just uh, use my external zip drive to boot this thing up. But first, let me plug into power, turn this on, make sure that it even works. All right, moment of truth. Haha, <laughs> well, there is sound, um, but it's the unhappy Mac sound. I'm gonna, okay, so the video picture looks good. The computer seems to be executing the ROM at least, because that's what's making the sound. But maybe the RAM that I put in there is in the wrong bank. I should have put the other ones in. And this has, the video memory is just not working, which is why we're seeing that. So let's pull this back out again. And I'm gonna install those other memory modules, I guess. There's also a set of uh, PAL chips here, and I bet you some of these do things like memory decoding and stuff. So I am just going to take these out and add a little bit of deoxit here to the sockets and reinsert these again. Actually, you know what? I don't know. Okay, let me, I took one out here. And I put that back in. Let's just uh, boot this thing up. See with the uh, full complement of RAM if this boots up now. Oh no, yeah, it's still not working. Same exact issue. It's like the RAM is not working. Oh, that means I gotta take the RAM out again. I so don't wanna do that. Oh. All right, so I've reseated all of these PALs and I put deoxid in them. So I think these are used to do things like memory decoding, potentially maybe video. Although this has a big glue chip here versus like the older Mac Pluses. I've taken out all of the memory that came on this machine and I've installed four 256 megs, uh, 30 pin SIMs here. I did look up the memory guide for this machine and I was right, SIM one and two, this is considered bank A and this is bank B. You do have to have memory here for the computer to work. I also was wrong that the video memory is not in the main RAM. It's actually right here. This is 41264 RAM here or uh, 4461 parts, 150 nanosecond. I'm pretty sure this is the video memory on this machine. It's one of the reasons why the SE30 is a lot faster than all the other classic Macs. On this machine, the RAM is fully available to the processor at full speed all the time, 32-bit data bus, and the RAM here for the video is separate and that doesn't take away bandwidth from the main RAM. So anyways, let's try this out with this 256 in here, see if this works. Okay, moment of truth. Did I ruin the motherboard or is this other RAM just flaky or, fla or not working properly? I don't have the speaker hooked up so we're not gonna hear anything. And what do we see? Oh, sweet. Okay, the gray screen, mouse pointer is right there. That's awesome. I hope to see the flashing question mark. That's sweet, there we go, flashing question mark. So this motherboard works. It is interesting that before I recapped it, it did turn on and we saw the gray screen and that was with all this original RAM installed, but now it doesn't seem to like this RAM. So I have to think that some of this memory is bad and it might've been in bank B in the second bank and maybe the computer just ignores bad memory when it's in bank B. And as long as you have memory in bank A, it's able to actually boot and give you that gray screen. So I've gone ahead and filled this up with two megabytes of NEC memory. It's all the same type of memory, so it should absolutely work without a problem. I think this came out of another Mac at some point. So I'm gonna put this in the case and run it through its paces.
Motherboard's installed, hard drive is hooked up, the one that's built in this computer, I think at two megs of RAM, system six should work, maybe. I don't know, we'll find out what happens. Floppy drive's connected and this keyboard and I have a mouse hooked up. Let's turn it on, let's listen for that nice chime. Excellent. <laughs> Quickly starting to boot. Well, that was fast. System 1.08, I guess, works on an SE30, and there we are, two megabytes of RAM. So here's the performance of the SE30 versus the Classic 2. Now, keep in mind, the SE30 is only 16 megahertz. I'm pretty sure the Classic 2 is a 25 megahertz machine, and yet CPU speed on the Classic 2, 0.22, and we get 0.26 on this machine. And then graphics is 0.16, 0.14, so it's also a little bit faster. But the disk speed, okay, we can ignore that because that's the hard drive. Math speed though, 0 0.7 versus 0 0.96, and that has a lot to do with the floating point processor. And then there's a performance rating overall, 0.27. So from an overall performance rating, it's not massively faster than the Classic 2, but considering the Classic 2 has additional megahertz quite a bit faster, if we had a same speed SE30, 25 megahertz, it would be blowing this thing out of the water. So there we go. This Mac SE motherboard is working great. Thumbs up. This RAM here, I'm not quite sure about. I'll have to test this in something else. I, I don't want to stress out these RAM sockets. So um, maybe I'll use the Classic 2 to go through that RAM. And then these Apple Talk adapters, these all work as well. I did a good quick test with these off camera. If you want to see more about how Apple Talk works, check out my video on that subject. I'll put a link in the description to that. And then these are the uh, bad parts I took off this board. Just these bad old electrolytics. And in case anyone's wondering, there are 10 47 microfarad caps on here and one single one microfarad 50 volt cap. So I happen to have those in stock from the other recappings I did. So it was pretty easy. And then of course, uh, CR2032 battery, battery holder. And there we go. This motherboard is looking awesome. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this new four bit video. I try to keep it short. I'm gonna do my best. I just, every time I make videos, they seem to go really long and like the mini mail call, it's kind of a joke, isn't it? Anyhow, I'm gonna release more of these so I can kind of get ahead of some of these videos I need to make that just take a long time if I try to combine them into long videos. And finally, I wanna say a huge thank you to Stefan for sending me this Mac motherboard and these um, adapters here along with that Bentley bag. That was kind of cool as well. So thank you very much for that. And that's it. So if you liked this video, appreciate it, thumbs up. But if you didn't, you know what to do, thumbs down, subscribe for more videos, hit that little bell icon to be notified and put your comments and your suggestions in the comment section below. Stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.